our PGA Tour coverage is presented by the TaylorMade TP5 and TP5X golf balls. Try it. What's the best that could happen? Another Sunday on CBS, another worthy winner. After knocking on the door for the last few months, Wyndham Clark finally kicked the thing in. The 29-year-old collecting his first career win on tour, bettering Xander Shoffley by four at the Wells Fargo. Clark began the day two shots clear by 8T. He trailed by one, but Clark more than able to right the ship and hoist his first trophy as a professional at any level. Emotional, your winner, Wyndham Clark. Welcome into those of you streaming final round coverage. Joe Musso joined by CBS golf analyst Rick Gaiman, who gets the first word. Rick, I got to allude to it. First Cut podcast crew has been on Wyndham Clark early and often, and here you all look like geniuses. What would you make of the performance here on Sunday specifically? It was super resilient, Joe, and this is about as proud of a guy that I can be of someone who I've never met before in, in real life. You know, Wyndham Clark's been on the PGA Tour for a handful of years, and he's always had a really cool skill set, being able to drive it far and putt pretty well, but never enough to really make a lot of noise. And he found something on the West Coast swing this year where he was able to dial in those irons and wedges, and it turned him into a completely different golfer. He started knocking on the door, as you mentioned, contending seemingly weak week in and week out and here to get behind to Xander Shoffley fairly early in this Sunday final round and find that resilience to make a birdie right the ship and then go into beast mode for his back nine I, I was incredibly impressed not only with the way that he played on Sunday but with the way that he's been playing all year long we will have plenty more on Clark from the guys up in 18 tower in just a moment but I also always value your point of view on a runner-up because they come in all shapes and sizes and here Xander Shoffley coming up well short, but did hold the lead there through seven holes, was one shot clear after starting the day two, do two down. Excuse me, Didn't necessarily smell the blood in the water. He's this type of guy who we always think should win more than he does, uh, best without a major, call it what you want. Maybe just don't call him in crunch time. What would you make of the limp home here by Shoffley? Uh, a limp home is a very good way to describe it. It was disappointing. You know, usually we see early in a Sunday final round, the guy with the better pedigree take the lead and never look back. And that's what I thought was going to happen when Xander Shoffley took the lead there on hole number seven. And then it was the bogey on nine, the bogey on 11, and then too little, too late to try to catch a guy who's never won before on the PGA Tour. So it's, it's a little bit concerning. You mentioned it. It's just another uh, data point in a series of shoulda, woulda, coulda, for Xander Shoffley. He will not add a designated event to his resume this time around, and he'll turn his attention to a major championship at Oak Hill in two weeks. Right, back to Clark for a moment here, because it was a comprehensive effort. The driving was prodigious at times. The putting uh, even caught up, put a new putter in the bag. But the ball striking, as you allude to, has sort of been the consistent point that's kept him at the tops of leaderboards throughout the season. He finally capitalizes on it. When you look at a guy who in the past has not had that stat profile and then compiles tournaments the way that he has, striking the ball fair way to green, I mean, what does that tell you about not just probability to win, but probability to be a mainstay on tour for an extended amount of time? Yeah, so the statistical profile that you mentioned is is phenomenal. Uh, he was first in strokes gained approach again here this week at the Wells Fargo Championship, and he's had basically the seven best approach weeks of his career all in his last seven or eight starts. Now that is still be still to be determined whether this is a hot run, whether he has found something and he's holding on to it, or whether he made a substantial change to his swing or his process that is going to allow him to continue to do this in the future. If it is the latter. Joe. If this is something that, that he is able to maintain for four, six, 12 months combined with the other skills that he already has in his bag and he's been developing for the last half decade, he's going to continue to be very dangerous. And that's the modern style of winner on the PGA Tour. Hit it far, get dialed in on the second shot and make enough putts to win. That's the blueprint. And it's what Wyndham Clark has shown us so far here in 2023. Rick Gaiman, always dialed. We appreciate you for your thoughts here on CBS Sports HQ. Talk to you soon. And don't forget, there's only one place to be for all your tour needs. That is the premier pod in all of golf. The First Cut podcast, our guy Rick Gaiman, Kyle Porter, week by week, round by round, bringing in some of the biggest names in golf. It is always worth a listen. Download anywhere you get your podcasts. It's the First Cut pod, and they will be live out at Oak Hill in two weeks' time 
Be lucky enough to join him for some live podcasting out there at the PGA Championship. But here this week, it is Wyndham Clark, your winner at the Wells Fargo, first time PGA Tour winner. Our guy's gonna break it all down in depth on the First Cut Podcast. And for more, we head at 18 Tower. We say hello to the lead voice of CBS Sports, Jim Nance, and the 2022 President's Cup International Team Captain right there at Quail Hollow, Trevor Immelman. Uh, guys, Wyndham Clark, now a winner on the PGA Tour, joining a pretty elite list to get it done at a designated event as well. He led by two, he chased one, he wins by four, a non-linear route to the winner's circle. Jim, what, in your opinion, allowed Clark to play through the ebbs and flows of the early round issues? Confidence. It was all confidence. And once he had confidence, he had it the first three days. He probably didn't have it the first seven holes as he was leaking a little bit. Gave that lead away. But once he restored it, we saw the real guy, the real player. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that to come. I heard you talking a minute ago. And you guys were speculating about uh, it was just, just a one-time occurrence or is there more of this to come? I said it a lot during the broadcast. Trevor, I believe there's a lot more of this to come. Yeah, he sure did show a lot of class today. For a guy that hasn't had any real winning experience at all, he had a lot of proven winners breathing down his leg, neck and that confidence that you speak of that he didn't have in the first seven, really from eight to 12 was where he ba made the big move with Shoffley. They had a five-shot swing in that stretch of holes and he just put his foot down on the gas, played beautiful golf, stuck to the routines and the strategies that he has uh, used throughout the week and uh, really did win in style. Right. It was a joy to watch. You know, at times Clark flexed his power off the tee. Other points, the putter picked him up. But the through line to his success, as we heard Rick Gaiman talking about this year, has been the ball striking, his five best weeks on approach of his entire career, all coming this season, guys. Trevor, can you speak to this type of aha moment a player can experience at a certain point of their career? Well, he's taken a lot of ownership in his own game. He hasn't been working with a coach. He really has just been working with his caddy, John Ellis, who he's known for a long time. And slowly but surely, they've just started to understand the patterns and the things that he struggles with. What are the tendencies? The tendencies are get to get a little too steep and swing to the left too much. So they've come up with a few drills to counteract that. And they've religiously stuck to working on those things. And they're starting to see results now. And over the last month or so, spending some time with him on the range, you can see that confidence and starting to build. That's exactly what Jim just spoke about. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for this guy. Just 29 years old, he's now proven to uh, not just us, but himself, that he can get it done against one of the strongest fields in golf. So I can't wait to see how he kicks this on for the remainder of the season and into the playoffs. Well, much like our Trevor Immelman, Clark putting a new putter in the bag this week as well. So a shout out here to the honeymoon phase. Uh, Jim, a final word here on our runner-up. Feels like a missed opportunity, no doubt, for Xander Shoffley, who in a 90-minute span went from one clear to four back. Still a name to consider in a couple weeks up at Oak Hill, but is there a missing piece to the gold medalist game that's keeping him from that top tier of players, the feared types, the types we expect to seize these moments? Oh, no, he is a top tier player. I think we're overreacting to what happened here today because he didn't really lose it at all. I mean, during that stretch where you just talked about there was this big swing, that was Clark making birdies. That wasn't, that wasn't Xander making a pile of bogeys. This guy that won three times last year, he won the Olympic gold medal. Um, he's made 24 straight cuts. He's fifth in the world. This guy's not falling here, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's just fine. He'll be, I think, a real threat to win the PGA Championship. There's, there's no doubt about that. Wyndham Clark uh, looks him in the eye here and is uh, four shots better on Sunday. Jim Trevor, we can't say thank you enough for spending the time. We appreciate you. You know, no two shots are the same in the game of golf. That's why you need a ball that was designed to perform on every type of shot. Introducing the TP5 and TP5X from TaylorMade. Try it. What's the best that could happen? Scan the QR code to learn more.